everybody, Norm from Tested here in the museum area of Monster Palooza 2017. Now, this is Nick Mara, an artist, and you, we met you like a couple years ago back at the old Monster Palooza when you had the amazing Yule Brenner yeah. from Westworld, which made it to the show, didn't it? Yes, it did. Oh HBO, my God. It, HBO contacted me um, after the figure was purchased, but the collector was making payments. He was about halfway through his payments when HBO contacted me. I contacted the collector. I said, do you mind if HBO Westworld used it? And he said, are you kidding? It's now a screen use prop. It became one of the most beloved Easter eggs yes. from the show. And it's a yeah. testament to how great your sculpture was. Now you're here at Monster Palooza showing off another new sculpture. It's so iconic. It's Quint from Jaws. Tell me the story of this piece, because it's a full diorama. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> He even has his chum bucket. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this, this was actually what I wanted to have as my first piece for my studio. Uh, I talked to my friend Greg Nicotero. He wanted to have all three guys at the back of the boat for Jaws Fest. So this was on the back burner. I did those, you know, helped him out with those figures. Then the Yule Brenner, I started working on the Yule Brenner. That became my first piece like my flagship piece. But this guy was the very first thing that I thought I was going to do. But finally, three years later, now here he is, he's finished. This, to me, epitomizes the character of Quinn. Totally. I, I love the pose. It, it's, it's really a pose. There's actually scenes of him in this pose. The leg crossed, all of those details, the slack shoulder. This is the scene where he's crushing the cup with uh, Richard Dreyfuss, yep. his yep. Hooper character. Cup versus the can, yeah. The, the cockiness, I love the cockiness, the arrogance. Uh, but also, he's realized left hand's in his pocket. He's kind of relaxed. Yeah. And this is just his scene that I think epitomizes his character. In starting this off, did you start off with the portrait, the likeness first? Yeah, I started, I saw the, I saw this whole finished piece in my head mm -hmm. I, before anything. It was already in my head, I just had to, bring it to life and I started with the sculpt just a head sculpt and I knew I was gonna have him turning looking to his right mm -hmm. and once I had the head done then the body was fabricated with believe it or not uh, a mannequin oh a cheap mannequin but what I do is I completely cut them up and make the mannequin becomes like a core and then I build on top getting the characteristics of that body with the proportions as close as I could get to Robert Shaw. So it's not about the pose, the poseability of the mannequin I, at all. It's a, correct. It's completely I disassembled. Complete, it's just so you know you have a forearm yes, core, a yes. body, a chest core, and then it gets molded because it's to do a, a full body likeness, it has to look the natural, like you can, yeah. the eye will know when it's yeah. not natural. Yeah. yeah, and Robert Shaw's you know, there's always, when you take sculpting, you learn about proportions. Uh, certain people's, like they have what they call an average, is um, eight from chin to top of the head, eight head lengths is usually the height of a person, oh. usually in eights. But Robert Shaw's around a six. So his head is actually bigger, and that's actually not uncommon to a lot of movie stars. Right, they got the big they heads. The big heads, <laughs> yeah. it's literal, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but again, he, another little characteristic I noticed, watching the film, the scene where he gets eaten by the shark, mm -hmm. he had to wear a harness, a heavy steel harness, which made him look very portly. Yeah. But if you see, you look at photos of him just in norm, there's, there's some great reference footage from this movie of him just walking around. He's actually fairly thin. He was not. He did not have this huge gut, like, but that was to protect him uh, from the mechanical shark, from because it actually injured Ted Grossman, who was a stuntman on the movie. The jaws malfunctioned, broke two of his ribs, so Robert Shaw needed a harness. So, but I, I didn't want that for this scene. I needed him as accurate as possible. So it's all custom, custom made. And tell then, me, tell me about the dressing of this, because. In building a full diorama, you have clothes, you have the chair, you have the rod. How much of it is custom? How much of it is found pieces? What's the process of sourcing something if it's a movie, it's a you know 30-year-old movie? Well, the chair, I was lucky enough, the the client actually supplied the chair and mm. the Penn Center rod and reel. 
Uh, so that made that aspect much easier. The deck was made, uh, which was great because I have uh, someone close, is a neighbor, Joe Alps, who was art director on Jaws. He actually came over and I got to look and test yeah. the paint of the Orca deck, which was covered. He said it, we, you know, it was covered with dirt. Mm -hmm. And I asked him some of the reference photos of Quint being eaten by the shark. I said, it, once the water got on the dirt, you see the real color comes out of the deck, which is like a, a rich reddish brown. But you see these white lines going up in between the deck panels. So what ended up happening, I called Joe. I said, Joe, what is that white stuff? Is that aluminum plating in between the... And he said, oh no. He says, we just put white caulking. <laughs> That's all it was, white caulking. So I put white caulking just like they did. So everything had to be... Oh, the other thing is the harness. Yeah. Quint's harness was also uh, supplied by the client. But the hat was custom made. Very difficult piece. Uh, it was made by a company called Heddles, uh, and they, to my specifications, they made the hat. They did a limited run of a hundred hats, but they had clasps in the back. Quint didn't have a clasp on the back. So what I had them do, I cut a pull up the silicone head of Quint and sent it to New York. So they could make a pattern off this, so it's a custom made hat for, for this figure. <laughs> And, and then the know, beer can. And the beer can, that was, you put on your detective hat and you go in, eBay, Etsy, Amazon, and we, we got lucky. This is a real a Narragansett beer can. Uh, that's period correct. It's a tin can, very hard. A lot of younger people don't even understand the significance of this scene yeah. because cans today are so easy to crush. These cans back then, you had to have some meats to crush these cans. These were not easy, but it made such a comical scene with, with yep. Dreyfus crushing the paper cup. Yeah. So, I mean, this, yeah, the, the jacket, also sourced from eBay. But that took the most time. Hunting down the period, it's an M1951 army jacket, just like in the movie. Uh, the details, the stitching of the Quint logo. Uh, on the far side, over here, the left upper coat pocket, again, great reference photos. You see clearly that the top pocket had been torn off, and then, and then the one side down was torn as well, and then it, it's implied that the Quint character put in 12 loops, just like that, diagonal loops. And all of that, I'm a detail freak. Yeah. I gotta have that. I have to have that. You know, I mean, we're familiar with, you know, replica prop builders building hand props, but to do a portrait and do a figure, you're doing you're going through the same process, the same yeah. research. You got yeah. direct ties to the production yeah. design, but you're yeah. also getting deeply connected with the character and yeah. how you understood the character watching and obviously yeah. loving the film. Yeah. That's great. What's right. next for you? This took three years to build. You're gonna do the the, the triptych all three? There, well, it's a possibility. Next might be Hooper. It would make sense to have Hooper crushing yeah. the paper cup. It would be great. Uh, and then possibly uh, a Brody, Scheider, standing by in the background looking on, seeing the, the tragedy that's unfolding in front of him. That, that's a possibility uh, as well. And then again, I have some other things in the works I can't really talk about right now uh, because I'm not sure of the priority. Um, but uh, there, there's definitely going to be some exciting things uh, in the near future. Well, congratulations on a, yeah. such a successful Thank piece. You. It's great to see it in person, Nick. It's great Thank to you, see you Thank again. Thank you so much. Great to see you again. And we'll have more from Monster Palooza. There's so much amazing stuff on the site. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.